Guys, part two of our journey in this adventure I'm calling Boarding Pass Negotiations. Yeah, that's right. I said it. We're on an adventure. So let's roll some dice and see where this takes us. It's Boarding Pass time. I don't know what that I don't know what that blurb was, but it was awful. But what isn't awful is this is Boarding Pass, the podcast that is meant to deliver some skills, tools, and tips to help you make yourself clearly understood and able to communicate more effectively to your overseas clients. I am Jack, and we are on part two of this story arc, really, of negotiations that you might have with those foreign clients. This week, we're going to go do a, a little bit more of a look at the vocabulary and the phrases that we're going to want to use or we might hear during negotiations and some of the expectations and maybe some situations. I'm going to give you some scenarios where we might see or need to apply the things that we've been learning so far in this podcast. So without further ado, let's look at the agenda. Like I said, we're going to do a little bit of a look at some more of the words, some more of the vocabulary that we're going to need to see during negotiations. And I'm going to get, I'm going to elaborate on that in a little, in a little bit. But also we're going to look at some more phrases, a lot more phrases that we're going to, going to want to need to use or at least hear during the negotiations with our overseas and foreign clients. Also, I'm going to go through some expectations, expectations from everybody involved. And for our audio listeners, I'm going to include a copy of a table that I have in the tube channel. Just could pop over to Boarding Pass uh, or RHS Media, and then you'll find the table that's there for this week's episode. And I'm also going to give you a few scenarios where you might experience some of the usual uh, tricks that negotiations employ and what to do about them in certain cultural scenarios, okay? So without wasting any more time, vocabulary. Okay, so a word about this week's vocabulary. I feel really bad about uh, last week's episode where I just gave you a massive uh, info dump. I just dumped a bucket full of words. Granted, words that your foreign negotiation team has probably been studying and reviewing prior to meeting with you, just be aware that these are the words that they've been looking at. And you might want to be familiar with these words and use them or be prepared to address them. But it was a lot. It was a lot. I'm aware of that. <laughs> so this week, I'm only going to give you three. So there you go. First word that we're going to employ, bottom line. Use this word, and if you use it, do a fact check, make sure that they understand what you just said. Hey, the bottom line is, well, what I'm talking about is the bottom line, make sure that they you know what bottom line is. By the way, I just said bottom line. Do you know what that is? Yeah. Next word, alternative. Use this word. It's, a, it's formal, but they should be aware of what that is. And the final word is consensus. Last week, we used the word compromise all over the place. This week, we're going to use the word consensus. And don't forget to use the verb that is attached to this word, which is reach. We reach a consensus. Enough about the words. Let's take a look at some of the more commonly used phrases we use for negotiations, boiled down into a more simplified manner, but something that still sounds natural phrases next. Let me throw a few questions out. What are your views on? Do you have any suggestions for? Would you like to suggest a course of action for? And how do you feel about dot dot dot? These are absolutely questions that they have learned maybe with a tutor or definitely in an English class preparing for negotiations. On the other hand, 
Let's use some responses or at least some open statements that you can use during negotiations. Let me make sure I got your point. I'm not sure I understood your position. Or, on the other hand, I understand your position. Could you please tell me again how you feel about? Or, please tell me again how you feel about or what you think about. I just want to make sure I got this part straight. Again, be clear when you say this. My tips from last week were to enunciate and rephrase if you have to. These are phrases you're going to want to say slowly and carefully and maybe rephrase if you have to. You have the words. You have the phrases. You're not going to be using any idioms. You really don't want to do that. And you're not going to use any jargon. But you know how negotiations are held when you're doing business with local clients and merchants. And they know how they do negotiations on their home turf. But where do the two meet? What are the expectations? What are their expectations? What are your expectations? I'm not going to tell you what your expectations should be when having negotiations with your clients. That would be impossible. I don't know who your clients are. I don't know where they're from. But what I can do is give you a very, very generalized overview of the kinds of circumstances and the thinking that goes on above them. I'm going to leave a copy of this title card for our audio listeners available on the YouTube channel. That's right. We do have a YouTube channel. This is a visual podcast, but I do make this available as an in audio form. So uh, go ahead, go over to the YouTube channel. That's uh, Born and Pass Pod or to RHS Media, uh, which is where I house all of the Boarding Pass Sessions videos. Just, just, I'm just going to go over a few of them. If you're from the States, obviously, the characteristics of a negotiation generally are, hey, look, look at Hollywood. Hollywood just over emphasizes and exaggerates these things and t just try to make it cool. Uh, but, but it's pretty, pretty spot on, actually. Negotiations tend to be enthusiastic. At times, they're, they're very tough or they can be very friendly. And they are definitely action oriented. And the reason why is because the key needs of a U.S. focus or U.S. centric negotiation is we must win. We must get something from this meeting. And we need results. But not, it's not a war. It, we're willing to cooperate. We're willing to compromise. We're willing to achieve consensus. But how do we go about doing that? Some of our tactics are to apply pressure, to make threats, not dangerous threats, but threats nonetheless, and to make small concessions and heavy bargaining. But how does that work in, say, Japan? Negotiations in Japan tend to be formal, group-focused, and the needs, the key needs in any negotiation tend to be about long-term relationships. And how do they go about doing that? Well, negotiations tend to require commitment. They are going to show some commitment and they are going to do things that are going to test your commitment to the negotiation. They are also going to push for things like package deals and they are also going to use delays. Constant, constant time delays. In Central America, if your customers are from Central America, the characteristics of their negotiations among themselves tend to be emotional. They wear their heart on their sleeves and very openly enthusiastic. If they're excited about a point, they're going to express it and even say they're excited about it. And why are they doing this? Their key needs are, again, personal relationships and also a very, very important loyalty. And how are they going to do this? Well, lots of bargaining, lots of emotional displays. 
So I'm showing you a contrast here between cultures. And so I'm going to give you a few scenarios where you might come across these tactics and my strong suggestions, if you will, on how to handle these. So let's jump into it. Let's not waste any time. I'm going to give you some scenarios where you'll see some of this in play. The first one you're going to see here is a delay. You're ready to feel out a proposal from the other side, but the other side is not replying. Not to your emails, not to your uh, appointments for Zoom calls, or they're talking specifically about that point. So you have a question and they are not answering or you are asking them to commit to an item on the meeting agenda for those negotiations and they are not agreeing to it. Either way, like not, they're not agreeing or rejecting. Or you're scheduling meetings and they just simply don't show up. So it's helpful to know what the common tactics are of the other culture, the target culture. And the oldest one in the book, of course, is delay. Delaying the other side. Do your homework. Know how they use delays in their negotiations. And know that in some cultures, they depend on delays more heavily than others. Sometimes the delays are short. Sometimes it's followed by an apology. Sometimes the delays can go on for weeks. And then when it's finally addressed, they don't make any mention of it. There you go. Putting pressure in this situation, in this instance, you have a price and you know your leverage. And so you repeat it. Maybe using more aggressive language. Don't make it personal when applying pressure. And always do it in the right environment. Don't be tempted to take your point you're trying to make out of the meeting. Or turn it around. Don't try to engage with it when you're outside. You might be approached outside of a meeting room by someone from the other team, but, but don't start that conversation. Don't agree to that conversation. Delay it and say, let's bring it, let's bring it back into the room. A point about Asian negotiations. In Asian cultures, negotiations and contracts don't hold any weight in a meeting room. It only matters in a social environment. And so does the pressure tactic. Again, don't engage. If you find yourself socializing with the other side or a member of the other team, you're, you're having a cup of coffee, or maybe you're having dinner together, don't, don't give an inch. Don't say yes or no. Don't look at any paper. Say, oh, that, that seems like a very interesting idea. I have no opinion on it. Why don't we continue this conversation in our next meeting or back at the office? Anyway, how's your coffee? Or anyway, isn't dinner great? And the other scenario you might find yourself in is this is one that happens a lot in movies and unfortunately it happens a lot in real life too and that is changing terms your team has a preliminary agreement you've spent days hours maybe weeks even with the other side emailing back and forth very small details of of every point that you want to sign Finally, your team has something and you send it to them. And then you get a call that the whole proposal has been rejected. And the other team wants to drop new negotiations with new terms. They will expect you to try to salvage the old deal. 
And what you do with this is up to you. Just be aware that this is probably going to happen. Guys, that has been the episode. Uh, next time, I'm going to give you a few more situations and a few more expectations. But uh, I have been Jack. This has been Boarding Pass Pod. And we are done with part two. Next time is part three. See you guys. Oh, 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 oh